Hi, it's Alex here, also known as Default Sound, and today I wanted to show you a new project I've been working on, and it's a material scanner for Substance Designer. Now, I was originally inspired to build this from David Riganelli. He built a scan box, and you can see this on his Art Station blog if you're interested in that. And I basically got the idea to build a very simplistic scanner using Lego. Um, so I've got this train track loop here, and I basically placed these four, well, markers at every 45 degree interval. And I've got this little Mindstorms train that basically, when it hits one of these markers, stops. And on the little robot train, there is a light that's going to cast our shadows on the material surface. So um, by using this little remote that comes with the uh, EV3, I'm able to just trigger the robot to move to the next interval, and then manually, with my camera plugged into my laptop, take the image. So here I've got the Canon EOS utility app and using this I'm able to remotely trigger the camera because I haven't got a remote, uh, remote shutter. Um, so what I'm going to do in a minute is basically move the robot forward, take an image, uh, move it forward, take an image and I'll do this eight times to get the eight samples that you need to uh, put into Substance Designer. So you can see here the lights quite evenly cast at each interval and we get pretty good accuracy as um, that sensor is going to well move at each 45 degree interval. So I'm just showing you here how the robot's moving around and effectively the track's acting as a dolly so you get pretty good accuracy as it goes around. And I also want to mention here that I really badly set the camera up on my desk chair to get it um, parallel with the floor so there's a lot better uh, ways of set, setting up the camera and as well the robot was pretty rushed. So uh, here I'm actually doing a proper scan so I'm just testing the first image there you go so it's the first image and now I'm going to use the remote to move the uh, little train forward and now it's at the next uh, interval and take the next picture and I'll move it again forward. You can see the uh, the shadow on the cloth there casting uh, at the right angle. So you, you can see that at the corners of the little cloth I've got there. And it's a pretty quick process. Um, if you've got this stuff available to you, it's very cheap, um, pretty good accuracy, as I'll show you in Designer later. The, uh, the results that you can get from this little uh, scanning setup. And there you go, it's pretty much done. So now we've got our eight samples, and now we'll take this into Substance Designer. So we're in Substance Designer now, and um, I've already brought in the eight samples that I've taken, and uh, I've used the default scanning template for PBR Metal Rough workflow. Um, so I bring in all eight here, and I've plugged them into the multicolor equalizer, which is default in the template, and it does help get you good results. You can see here that I've got the um, albedo and normal and they're looking pretty good. Although when I was recording this I realized that my normal map wasn't quite right. And what you do have to be aware here is that you set the um, normal, multi-normal uh, uh, node to the correct direction. And you can see here that I've noticed it's going the wrong way around. So I've set this back to zero as that would be the first angle. And it's a little bit better but I've, it's still inverted. So I think here I change it to clock, um, sorry, anti-clockwise, and that seems to do the trick. I'm just confirming that, yep, yeah, indeed it is flipped. So that makes me presume that the direction is the wrong way around. And it's fairly straightforward from this point on. The template pretty much does most of the work for you, and you've just got to make sure that you've got all your settings correct. And sure enough, after I've done that, it's facing the right way. And you can see all the little wrinkles as well that um, has been picked up in the scan. So that's good news. And uh, here I'm just tweaking the levels of my fake roughness. Not the correct way to do this, but it's just something to quick I've thrown together just to quickly get an idea of how it might look. You can see here that the um, camera is also incorrectly set up for the colour. So if you are doing this, it's good to use a proper like Macbeth chart and make sure your shutter settings and ISO and all that stuff is correct. I was really crudely throwing this together. So in order to get some of the colour back, I've used the levels to push the blues a bit, because that's what the colour of the cloth was. Um, so yeah, just again, if you know what you're doing, 
make sure you set your uh, settings correctly. And uh, overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. And you also can get pretty good results from the smart auto tile. Just make sure that you are shifting in the uh, little transform nodes to uh, line up where the, the texture should tile. Um, and also the tessellation worked quite well here. Uh, but you wouldn't really want to use it on something this small. It just goes to show how uh, accurate you can get from this scan. Um, yeah, that's that's about it from from this. And you can again see the details of the normal map, and that's probably the most important aspect that we want to capture here is that depth. And uh, yeah, that's basically it really. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just a quick overview of how you can build a very basic material scanner for Substance Design. And if you've got a bit of Lego kicking around your house or a Lego Mindstorms kit, you might be able to build on something similar. Um, that's not the end of this. I've been also building something a bit more sophisticated and it's a bit more uh, closely related to Dave Riganelli's scanner. And here's a little sneak peek of what I've been working on. And I'll have a video on this very soon. Thanks.